far as I can tell, there is no compelling reason for most hypertrophy-oriented lifters to incorporate strength training. Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization, and today's video is going to make an interesting claim that will maybe upset you, but don't worry, we'll be friends after. And it is going to be the claim that I will be making that getting stronger won't help you get bigger. Uh-oh. Q comments. Here we go. First reaction when I wrote this PowerPoint that I had was, how could it not? How could getting stronger not make you bigger, not help you make bigger? What a ridiculous idea. And the idea that getting stronger directly makes you bigger is true. Like if you train for strength, it's also going to help you with hypertrophy. But what we're talking about today is a more nuanced idea. It is the idea that if you train for hypertrophy for an extended period of time, months or years, going and doing a strength-specific training phase for several months or longer, and then coming back to hypertrophy after, can grow more muscle than just staying in hypertrophy training all the time. The idea that means is that getting stronger potentiates, improves the future result of actual hypertrophy training. It potentiates muscle growth later, right? It's like brushing your teeth before you go to the club doesn't actually get you laid unless you really creatively use the toothbrush and then maybe you don't even have to go to the club. But if you're brushing your teeth, that potentiates you getting laid at the club later. It doesn't itself actually physically cause you to be laid. It is not the laying, again, unless you're creatively using the toothbrush. So uh, no judgment. And as a matter of fact, kudos. The idea that getting stronger potentiates size gain is very old, at face value, very persuasive, and is kind of often assumed as like, well, duh. However, we have to examine point by point what strength training, sets of three to six repetitions as general strength training is defined in the sports science literature, what is it actually doing for you? And then we're going to open that up claim by claim and see how does that transfer into making you more jacked later. I can think of a few things that strength training does for you. First, it helps you coordinate the recruitment of your high-end motor units so that you can produce a ton of force in a sequenced way to actually complete a lift versus stalling out. It also teaches you what technique is good to use to coordinate as much muscle as possible to actually get the lift. It's like trying to deadlift by using mostly your glutes versus deadlifting and using glutes, lower back, adductors, quads, hamstrings, everything. Strength training teaches you how to coordinate all those muscles to work together. Strength training teaches you how to preserve your technique even under heavy stress. If you can have good technique under a three rep max, you sure as shit can have good technique under a 10 rep max, no problem. It directly, strength training directly stimulates muscle growth via high tension, duh, easy. So it doesn't just potentiate potentially, uh -huh. it uh, actually grows muscle for sure, but that's not controversial, that we are not arguing. It does allow you to use heavier external loads later in training. You take a power lifter versus a bodybuilder, a power lifter can, for the size of their muscles, use way heavier hack squat and leg press weights. And ostensibly, you would think that would help hypertrophy, because using heavier weights maybe stimulates the muscle more and grows more muscle. We'll figure that out. And lastly, it provides a much needed volume and exercise variation. If you just crank high intensity, high volume hypertrophy training all the time, then at some point, just having any kind of break is great. And strength training, lower volume sets of three to six versus higher volume sets of five to 30 reps. Man, like that break by itself could do some potentiating. Okay, let's take this claim by claim. So first, strength training helps you coordinate the recruitment of the highest end motor units to produce a lot of force in a sequenced way to get the lift. Yes, this is true. But near failure hypertrophy training, sets of 5, 10, 15, 20, etc., also does this. And it's not going to, the hypertrophy training won't make you produce more force, but it'll help you get extra reps. Either way, your performance is higher and your ability to get extra reps, push that muscle further to its actual failure point is trained just as well with hypertrophy training as it is with strength training. And as a matter of fact, I would actually submit that it probably trains it more specifically with hypertrophy training. If your goal is to try to go from doing sets of 13 in the leg press to sets of 16 by just eking more fucking juice out of that muscle, training in that 13 to 16 rep range is the best way to do it. Yes, of course, people who train 
for sets of three to six will be able to take a lot of juice out of a muscle as well, but their ability to do so may be limited. They may be not used to the kind of lactic acid pain and the psychologically they won't hold in. Their cardio may be more limited. So the transfer of training effect for making you able to squeeze more out of training is actually better or at least tied with the very actual higher reps that you're doing. Think of it something like, well, you know, if you're a boxer and you punch a wall, you hit the wall really hard, and if you can hit that, you could hit a human face. True. But what if you have sparring partners? Isn't the most specific thing to hitting a human face, hitting a human face, the way to get better, at least directly at hitting a human face is going to the club and starting fights. I'm kidding. Don't do that. Gra- <laughs> grappling is better. Scott, 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 the video guy, are you, are you serious? I tried to hold it as long as I could. <coughs> That's what I said to her. This is so rude. <coughs> Are you okay? <coughs> it's coughing. It was. COVID. It turns out if you want to learn how to eke more out of the muscle, doing the hypertrophy training itself at least does that as well as strength training. So on that, no advantage to strength training. Moving on. Point number two, strength training teaches you what technique to use to get as much muscle mass, as many different muscles into a lift as possible from the many muscles into one group together in unison, like a deadlift that uses everything, adductors, quads, glutes, blah, 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 blah. Now, that is actually learning a technique that is directly antithetical to what we want to do in hypertrophy training, which is usually pick one target muscle group and develop a technique that really tries not to isolate it as much as to focus on it to make sure it's the limiting factor. When you're doing hack squats, You want to make sure that your quads are the limiting factor. And if you have learned to do hack squats and strength training in such a way that uses a lot of your glutes and a lot of your lower back and tons of adductors, that doesn't really help you push the quads further. As a matter of fact, you're training a skill that is a little bit of a detour away from what you should be training. So to me, no no dice there for strength training, no advantage, and maybe even a small disadvantage. Um, One thing I will say is When we train people for hypertrophy here at RP and they come from a strength training background and they will attest to this themselves, they have to kind of learn how to train for strength training. Like people who are from powerlifting will try to use every fucking muscle in their body to get a lift. And we're like, no, 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 this is a skull crusher. Use your triceps. And they're like, oh, and it takes them a few sessions to really get into the groove. So maybe it's actually doing something you don't want it to do. Number three, strength training teaches you how to preserve your technique even under heavy stress. Yeah, but like so does high rep hypertrophy training. Near failure training, sets of 12, sets of 10, yeah, you'll learn how to preserve your technique or die trying. Same with strength, no advantage there. It's the going hard that does that, not the heavy loads. Number four, strength training directly stimulates muscle growth via high tension, accurate. But it misses out on much of the metabolite stimulus. It misses out on high volumes entirely. Thus, it grows much less muscle than hypertrophy training and for a higher price of fatigue. It would be very curious to be doing power lifts for sets of three or six, anywhere between that, and be doing that next to a power lifter who's doing sets of five to ten. And you, he asks you, hey, you're getting into lifting, getting into power lifting? I thought you were a bodybuilder. Like, yep, just trying to put on more size. I'm using strength training for it. And he's like, huh, okay. And you're like, what are you doing? Why are you doing sets of five to ten? He's like, trying to get bigger because that's the hypertrophy fucking range for the love of God. Backwards. So it makes no sense. Number five, heavy training, strength training, allows you to use heavier external loads, like more weight on the bar, in future higher rep training, right? But here's the deal. We try to have technique in hypertrophy training to maximize internal loads. I want to use as little weight on the bar as possible, but I want to arc and architect and move my body into such a way that really hits my triceps. Internally, the triceps are generating a ton of force. Externally, not so much. Here's a really a good example for the quads. Squatting for hypertrophy, you squat a little bit back and then down, letting your knees come forward, letting the quads stretch a ton. Now, the quads stretched at the bottom means internally, they are pushed to their limits with force production. Externally, it's such a poor leverage point for quads that if you simply sat back and down and went just below parallel, the quads are better leveraged. You can lift externally a shitload more weight. Same thing that if you put the bar in a low bar position, crazy external loads, but internally, your muscles are working no harder. So what exactly here is the advantage? Most muscle growth occurs per fiber, per muscle cell. And if you just bring a muscle close to failure and you really try hard, that really checks pretty much all the boxes. Some growth does occur between fibers and through connective tissues. But again, if you try to arc, sorry, try to position that muscle and position those movements in such a way 
as to put themselves into a mechanical disadvantage. The internal tension generated by the muscle is at least as high as it is in strength training, but at the benefit of not having to put 500,000 fucking pounds on your back. Not a winner here, again. Number six, strength training can provide much needed volume and exercise variation. You do different movements, low bar versus high bar squats, competition benching versus incline benching, and your volumes are like a third or two thirds of what they would be in hypertrophy training. That's really good. That's really good. But sets of three to six are really heavy and thus provide a lot of fatigue, specifically joint and connective tissue fatigue. And they layer in a small but notable addition of injury risk. I mean, it's just a statement of fact that lifting heavier will, on everything else being equal, be more likely to hurt you than lifting lighter. So is it worth it? Let me tell you guys about the RP Hypertrophy app. With over 28 preset programs already in the app, you can choose to make your own, you can modify an existing program, or you can just run the programs exactly as they were written by me personally. This app programs everything for you. Exercises, weights, sets, reps, frequency, the whole thing. After every single workout on every single week, the app adjusts to your unique parameters with every single input. We have over 250 exercises in the app with detailed video tutorial links to every single one. You never have to be confused about technique or form ever again. I'm guessing right now you're pretty interested in the app? Download the RP Hypertrophy app today. Tough, very tough. So that's all six points. Let's get to the verdict or what, sort of what I finally think about all these things. Uh, we got A, B, C, and D. I, I got tired of numbers. Now we're using letters. Point A, as far as I can tell, there is no compelling reason. There could be nuanced marginal reasons, but no compelling reason for most hypertrophy-oriented lifters, such as maybe yourself, to incorporate strength training as a matter of its own benefit to the whole process of growing muscle. Not to say that if you don't want to get just fucking strong, hey, my blessing to you. Point B, for variation and volume reduction, you can use maintenance phases, and then you can use sets of five to 10 reps, fewer sets so that it's just maintenance and not between your minimum effective volume and maximum recoverable, so really about a third of the normal volume used for training. And if you use those, they're superior on fatigue accumulation, they accumulate very little fatigue, and much less Injury risk, because it's not heavy as fuck, sets of three to six, it's much lighter significantly, five to 10. And if you layer in maintenance phases with some active rest phases, you're bringing down the total system fatigue like crazy in a way that is categorically better than what a strength training phase would do. Like ask any power lifter, after three or four months of hard strength training, sets of three to six, are they really less fatigued? That would be an insane thing to say. They'd be like, what the fuck is wrong with you? I'm beat to shit. That's not really bringing down fatigue for my bodybuilding purposes. And you would be completely correct. C, beginners should probably spend the majority of the first year, even two, doing sets of five to 10 reps. They do get lots of volume for growth, but also that five to 10, five to six, five to seven gets them a lot of benefits of strength training as well. Uh, technique under stress, neural coordination, motor unit recruitment, because they might not have the technical wherewithal to do high reps close to failure. They can absolutely do lower reps relatively close to failure and maintain their technique. After about a year, maybe two of training, the return on investment of just dogmatically sticking to the five to 10 range and avoiding 10 plus reps just is very low. And the return on investment can even be negative, where it's like, why are you doing this? compared to using the entire broad range of sets of five to 30 repetitions and finding out where your best training in there occurs and varying it, your best stimulus to fatigue ratio. Lastly, point D, if you choose to strength train, you're like, look, Mike, I hear you, man, but I want to get fucking strong too. And I'm bored as fuck doing hypertrophy training. No worries at all. A few tips for you as to how to take you and take your hypertrophy training and transition it to a type of strength training and doing strength training in a way that hurts you the least and benefits you the most. So here it is, a couple of tips. First, ease into the loads. If you've been squatting 225 for sets of 15, do not just really come to the gym the next day and start your strength phase and just put 275 on the fucking bar. Go to 245, then 255, then 265, etc. Don't just go insane. Next, probably try to focus on exercises that will carry over to hypertrophy a little bit more. High bar squats. If you want to get stronger, but you don't want to compete in powerlifting, 
just stick to high bar squats versus low bar in most cases, because low bar beats the shit out of your body more. Ask any power lifter. High bar is gentler on the body, but will make you very strong in high bar so that when you come back to doing your hypertrophy work, hey shit, you'll be a high bar god. Next, take a few months so you can measurably improve. Two mesocycles at least, not just one. A lot of people will say, oh, I want to do strength training, and they'll do it for like a few weeks. Their body just begins to make the neural and architectural and technical adaptations to really start to get them stronger, and they're like, ah, I'm done. Well, okay, you just kind of beat up your body for a few weeks. You just take it a maintenance phase. If you want to get really strong, strong, three, four, five months of strength training in months, three, four, and five is when you're going to be like, holy shit, I might start to fight crime. I can bend a fucking barbell. And then it snaps, and part of the metal just flies and fucking hits the old lady in the eye. And you're just like, ah, ah. And you're like, oh shit, am I a villain? And you lean into it. You're like, fuck it. And you finish off the old lady with the other bar handle. I don't even know who I am anymore. Shut up, Mike. Next, make sure the total volume is low so you can at least use the strength training time to resensitize to higher volumes so that once you're done with strength training and then you take that last point of an active rest phase after to really clear out all the fatigue, specifically the joint and connective tissue stuff, which will beat you up a little bit, after that active rest phase and a whole bunch of very low volume strength training, you can come back to hypertrophy training, start at very low volumes, and slowly ease up. And you will notice that your pumps and soreness and all of the other proxies for growth are incredible at very low volumes, and it's going to take you months to get back up to traditional volumes, and you're going to be gaining the entire way all the way through. So folks, if you have questions in the comments, I'd love to address a few of them at least. Give it some thought. If you like this kind of nerdy stuff, we will see you in our members area, which for more money... Uh, we'll get you more nerdy videos every week. And guys, remember, I see none of this money. It goes directly to my butlers who go directly to the Lamborghini dealership and they drive back in a Lambo. They all take Ubers to the dealership because they always come back with a new Lambo. It's kind of an official rule at my house. If a butler leaves to go to the dealership and comes back without a Lambo, they don't have a job anymore. I don't give a shit if they were out a Lambo. Steal a motherfucker. And lastly, if you like this kind of stuff and you want to ask me questions in real life, and by real life I mean in a live video chat, see you on Chatterbait. I'm just kidding. Do you think we'll get flagged for that? I sure hope not. Uh, see you at the Team Full ROM forum. All the links are below. Get off Chatterbait, you degenerate. Get a job. See you guys next time.